Yeah, we're gonna get some photos today. Wanna be my picture? I think we both were at an all-time low. Yo, I got to the airport mad early, really just to be able to take some photos here. Just got through Tuesday pre-check. Look at this. Look at this. I don't have any film on my camera, so I'm just gonna load that right now. Locked and loaded, let's go. Well, before we got on the plane at JFK, I noticed my iPad was smeared with some from weeks ago. You know, I had a little fun night. And so when we got off, I was panicking because there was a fucking, uh, 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 dog. Uh, uh, yeah, there was a dog they were yeah. walking around with from Tunnel Rex. We got to get out of here now, 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 now. I mean, there wasn't like a, a real amount. It was just like, you know, like residue or yeah. whatever. They, they were not very good drug sniffing dogs, let me tell you. <laughs> no, and, but you know, that's that. Uh, Rex calls me, I'm at the airport. Rex is like, bro, this shit is canceled. I booked the hotel. They sent me confirmation email, right? And after that, you're like, okay, I'm good. Confirmation email. Three weeks later, they sent me another confirmation email. It's like, hey, we're we're excited to see you. You want to upgrade your stay? Right. Thought nothing of it. They said another one, like like, hey, trip's coming up. Freaking Rex and Willie get there. We find out our fucking <laughs> our reservation's been canceled. Yeah. None of us knew. Luckily, they had rooms. When we jump on the plane, automatically, me and Rex don't fit. <laughs> we're sitting next to a white guy we called Kyle because he looks like a Kyle. Slumped in the corner. Meanwhile, me and Rex were basically popping out the seat. Half of my body was hanging out into the aisle. I got hit in the arm with a lot of cards, a lot of butts. It's, 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 it's what, what corpses feel like. That's, yeah. how we, that's how we were on the plane. But, you know, we made it through that. We got off the plane. We hopped in that cab. And we, were, we took that trip down the highway to New Orleans city proper. I don't know, but the guy was nice. And from the conversation, I got that. I think we both got to like, all right, just, you know, keep our wits about us and, you know, things will be fine here. Like My, my New York arrogance definitely kicked in where I thought, well, it's not going to happen to me. We know the big city deal. We went and explored a little bit for a couple hours. We had some shots, drank. Bourbon Street was fucking lit. We were having a good, we were having the time we expected to be having at that point. Yeah, at that point, things were looking up. They were on the up and up. We were like, oh, this is great. You know what? Oh, fuck the plane ride, fuck the hotel. At least we're here. We're going to make something out of this. It can't get any worse than this. Yeah. We just kept saying it can't get any worse. And you guys shot like two or three rolls at that point before I even got there. Yeah, before you got there. Yeah. yeah. So then you come. You made it. We here at the hotel. I'm going to put my shit down, uh, get organized and get the fuck out there and take some pictures. Let's go. But first, we got to meet up with some fellow photographers. Yo, put some clothes on. Put some clothes on. Let's go. Alright, we're, we're in New Orleans, Mardi Gras, let me see some fucking titties. <laughs> you have no idea what I did for my beads. <laughs> we earned those fucking beads. I pop in and you guys are already beat. We're already a little drunk. We've yeah. been walking around for a few hours. We bought a bottle already. Yeah. We're telling you to buy a speaker. Um, you get there. This just got ready and just hit bourbon, right? Just, yeah. Like, just started shooting. What's going on, people? <laughs> Let's go. We outside today. We outside today. Oh, it's a glorious morning. <laughs> Started going into bars and then we met up with Jorge, Jorge right? Yeah, Jorge showed up at dinner. Before we went back to Bourbon, we went to that little spot. Yeah. And then we went outside and, you know, some shirtless guy with a lot of face paint and sparkles yeah, uh, offered me shrooms standing by a porta potty. His yeah. dick was out too. I said no, but you know, he was probably one of the nicest people on yeah, the fucking trip. He, he, yeah. he was mad nice. Yeah. It, I think that was the peak of the, the, the trip in terms of like no bad shit happening. Yeah, that's, that's, that's when things were like fine. Like we were there, we were yeah. in it. We were getting good shots in, uh, drinking good shots, and nothing was missing. Yeah. Girls started popping out their boobies yeah. for boobies for beads. It was like, wow, this is this is kind of crazy. But you know, I mean, at that point, I hadn't seen any nice boobies. They're all kind of like fucking beat. But it was like, yeah, oh, boobies. You know, it whatever. Was, it I'm was drunk. A, it it was all a, looks good. It was a start. And we went back to Bourbon. We were going to the dungeon. Yeah, and uh, that's when I realized I lost my phone. Oh, and at this point, uh, we had already popped. I popped, and. Uh, 
started kicking in, right? I popped something yeah. too because I needed something to pick me up after. Uh, but they were like small doses, so it didn't kick small. right away. Right. But it did kick in after after the dungeon. I don't know, I had some heartfelt conversation with the mustache guy. There was a kid there. He gave me those big ass beads. No, that was another guy. Another guy gave me those beads. Well, another guy gave yeah. me the beads? Another dude that had also had like a beard and mustache. That's right, yeah. And he he really liked he, you. Yeah, he just gave he like literally just gave you the beads, said something, and then like he kind of just Yeah, they dipped after that. Yeah. So when we're outside, I started using the find my phone to find your phone. Mm -hmm. And I put the phone back in my front pocket because of what happened. Yeah. Then I think it was when Actually, as I was as we were approaching the hotel again, that's when you noticed that you had lost it. But it had only been a couple minutes since I last put it in my front pocket. Right. And I was very mindful to put it in my front pocket because he just lost his phone. Exactly. And so I go into my front pocket, bam, that shit's gone too. Yeah. That was like that was like later at night. That was basically when we were, we were winding down. It, it should be noted, my phone was in my front pocket too. I remember you guys went ahead. We left the dungeon. It was still like it was probably like closer to midnight, maybe maybe after midnight at this point. You guys left with with jorge went back to the hotel room and then i was on the way there but i was kind of like slowing down taking pictures or whatever and then i just got a tech they really lost his phone we both lost our fucking phone yeah because then then we found out through other people that we were far from the only people who got their phone taken and we were not the only ones who thought to put it in their front pocket right because we thought the front pocket is secure it turns out you have to shove your phone up your ass to properly secure it which we did find out later i took a lot of photos that first night i think i, think I got some good some decent ones i think yeah. i went through like six rolls or something like that something moderate about the same yeah yeah i mean like the shots were there like everything looked great i mean during the day at night it was awesome you know it's your first time in a new city so everything looks like photographable i mean everything you know technically is but like you know what you're looking for um so i was pretty happy with that but then we lost our phones and then jorge left us uh and then you came but by that time i realized i lost my id and then i was just that put me over the edge i was like fuck how the fuck am i gonna get and before that we had realized rex couldn't find his vax card that's right oh, yeah. yeah so that, that was the whole thing so like at that at that point when you lost both your id and your phone we were like okay we can't even go to a bar because you need a vax Rex needs his Vax card, Willie needs his ID. So we like were calling it a night and figured we'd handle it tomorrow. But I, I couldn't sleep. I was angry. The molly was hitting hard. So I go outside and I smoke myself a cigarette. I'm wearing all these fucking beads. And I say, no, you know what? Fuck this. That ID has to be back at that bar. I'm going to go get it. You needed your own adventure. Yeah, I did my own adventure. I went. I found it. She had it. And then I started drinking there because I was so happy. Well, you know what? At least I got my ID. I kept telling Rex, yo, we'll just get you a new phone tomorrow. And I said the same thing myself. I'll just get myself a new phone. No big. So then I start going out and I start hopping, jumping into different bars. I don't know how many bars I jumped into, but I jumped into quite a few that night. And I was shooting uh, with a little point and shoot, I believe. Just know, at this point, me and Rex are knocked yeah, out. We have no idea. We have no idea. We, we went to we, see like We a, didn't hear this motherfucker. Yeah, I, I, I pulled That's the right, fucking yeah. Willie. Yeah, I pulled the fucking Willie. But you know, I'm out drinking and then I decided to go into the strip club. I turn around, there's one fucking stripper dancing in the whole place. Everything else is just dudes. <laughs> I felt insulted and I did I, like I couldn't even sit near her. I'm like, I'm out. This is garbage. Went back to the hotel, but that was that was pretty much the end of my adventure. And that was it. And that was that was day one. Yeah. That was day one. But I got my ID back. Day two, they're sleeping. I'm on my way to get coffee. We woke up before you because you had a night. <laughs> yeah, you, you knocked the fuck out. Yeah, I, well, I woke up, got coffee. You checked your shit again. Yeah, and I found my Vax card because I actually had to sleep this time. Everything everything was looking up. Things, things, we thought, I thought luck had turned yeah, in our favor. Yeah, we were yeah. laughing about it. We were like, you know what? The T-Mobile's not that far away. You know, let's have some breakfast and then we'll go handle this. Willie woke up. We found out Willie had his ID. Everything. All we needed were the phones and then the trip was right on track. I called you guys. You guys didn't have a phone, so I called you guys at Uber to T-Mobile. Sent you guys on your way so uh, I can go shoot. The weird part was we got in that Uber. First thing the guy says, yeah, I think I can make it there. And he couldn't fucking find where the address was like like he didn't know how to maneuver the uber app. He, he seemed like a new uber driver or yeah. like or like very he, th he thought the pickup bot was the destination we figured it out and then i remember just closing the door and seeing your face like like you knew like there's a possibility these guys are not gonna be okay <laughs> yeah. you got to like godspeed i looked at you like help me <laughs>
And then, so he took us to... It was the nearest T-Mobile that we had located on map. And um, it's out in the middle of fucking nowhere. That T-Mobile had no business being out there. I probably had no business, period. I think the neighborhood was called Nowhere, New Orleans. <laughs> That's where we were. Uh, and it was closed. Closed. It was closed. That's when the, the negativity started to set in. Yeah, but we're, we but were like, fuck, what, what the fuck next? So you guys are at this T-Mobile with no phone. We're no, no. We got no phones, and the guy doesn't know how to use his phone. But we're like, yo, come on, think. Where is there a Best Buy? Is there like but he, he he was a good I think he's like a like a Haitian dude and he knew how to he, he had a really nice French accent it's like no I know there's another one I could take you to the one uh, near the Walmart you know is no, <laughs> it like, time, he's like also, the mall. meanwhile I'm out fucking shooting I'm out fucking on bourbon I'm right. out on the parade route just having a great having, time having a time of my life yeah he said the mall and we're like where's the mall he's like oh right over the river I'm like well we by the time we're making it on the bridge we're like yo we're going mad. Yeah, right we're, now. We look at each other like, where the fuck are we going? Yeah. All I see are like, looks like warehouses and shit like that. So I'm yeah. having thoughts in my head like, is this a scam? Is this motherfucker taking us yeah. to fucking the fucking warehouse? We're gonna get the living shit beat out of us or a camera? Yeah, we're gonna lose everything. Like, what's gonna happen now? But he takes us to this mall. We pull up at the mall, and then we head to the T-Mobile. And we see this dude in front of us. He asks one of the T-Mobile employees if they have any iPhones available. And that's when we hear, no, so many people came by for new iPhones that morning because they'd all lost or had their phones stolen that the T-Mobile had run out of phones. So that fucked with us. Yeah, you know, we asked, where could we get a phone right now? And, you know, after looking around a kiosk and everything, we found what I think was basically a fucking pawn shop or some shit. Like, leave them all, try and cross the fucking highway street yeah. hybrid that was. No, no crosswalk, we're just running through traffic. And th this was like a, one of those shady electronics stores where they clearly buy stolen shit. But we needed phones, so we're like, whatever. We saw two iPhones, one's 650 and one's 750. We ask why, he says the other one has more storage, the first one's only 64 gig. All right, whatever, I don't even think to check, because at this point, I'm exhausted, fucking aggravated, I, I, wanna, I wanna kill myself. You know, we say, okay, cool, look, we'll just buy it. We need phone. Yeah. All right, one, two, three, we'll go back to T-Mobile, get our SIM cards, boom. Now we're in the fucking food court, trying to configure it so we could call somebody, and most of all, get an Uber. Which at that point, I sure just hit you up and told you to get it for us so we didn't waste time. My, the, my phone was, the service wasn't connecting, but my head was not on straight, so I'm thinking, once we get better service my phone will start kicking in it didn't you now finally i get my account working on uber so you know waiting for like half an hour because she got lost and you know while we're waiting for her outside people are coming in and out of the mall my uh my paranoia is up yeah. a kid walks by me i'm ready to punch him in the face in case he reaches in my fucking pocket we don't know where we're at we didn't look like we were from there right we just want to get the fuck out of there as soon as possible we got in uh, uber first thing she tells us is i'm gonna get you as close as i can because there's a parade fuck it just get us back to civilization and we need to get back to shoot photos and and not get killed because and i think that's when i hit my low point of the trip like you know all this shit was starting to pile up it was like murphy murphy's laws like whatever can go wrong will go wrong and that's when i like it was on the car ride when my phone still wasn't coming through, like no messages are coming through nothing's working that's when i realized i just brought a brick but we just wanted to get the fuck out of there as soon as possible but i was it's one of the lowest points of my fucking life where i just realized nothing's going our way we've never been around each other that quiet that long i think we both were at an all-time low we get back to the hotel room, and though his shit isn't working, I realize it's the same exact phone. Though I just paid a hundred dollars more for the same exact fucking phone. Yours works. Kind of works. Like I can open, you know, things if I can find them, because all the icons are <laughs> invisible for some reason. I can call somebody and I can text. That's and get an Uber. But that that's pretty much seven fifty down the fucking drain. But that night, I think nothing happened after that, and we got to go out and shoot photos. Yeah. We shot. We had a good time. After after we got back to the hotel, I don't think anything else went wrong. We went out, we got some shots, 
got some alcohol shots, came home with I don't know how many rolls, but we got the job done. Day two over. Day two over. Day three boys. We're still alive. We're still alive. That's, that's fucking all, God. That's all that matters. I still got a pulse, man. <laughs> I woke up feeling like a fucking car with no oil in it. Just, ah, yeah. ah. Still working it's though. It's still working. It's <laughs> gonna get worse. Uh, I, like, I don't even want to know what it's gonna be like getting back on that fucking plane. How you feeling, Paul? I'm feeling good. It's, uh, it's, it's Monday. He's obviously not drinking as much as we are. <laughs> Lundy Gras? I think they call it Lundy Gras. Rex has got the contacts. Willie's got the M6. This city just takes and takes and it takes. takes. It fucking yeah. takes, bro. Yeah, it throws you some beads for your trouble. <laughs> All right, let's get the fuck out of here. And Monday, I think Monday overall, maybe the best day of the trip. And I think from top to bottom, nothing bad really happened. Well, first we, we in the morning, we had breakfast at that spot that we like then we just walked we kind of we walked right went to the frenchman street out different things then wandered into the red bean parade yeah, yeah. The, not the red beans and rice parade now the red beans and rice parade like i got yelled at for by a bartender <laughs> and that's when we really got to discover a lot of the unique and creative characters of new orleans who's a little camera goblin want to be my picture <laughs> <laughs> I'm just scared about later. That's that's gonna be me later. Broken on the floor into pieces. Um, what did we eat that night? That night we ate... We ate with, uh, with, our, with our boys. That was Monday? Okay, that was the weird night. We're waiting for a table, and then I think you took a photo, and I hear some uh, big, huge white dude come over like, Hey, bro, did you take a photo of me? Right? He came at no, you like he that? Was, he came at me, he was like, he's, would you take a photo with me? Pull out his phone, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, whipped out, took a selfie with his camera of me and him. And then that was it for me. And then he kept talking, and then, and then you took over. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm done with this conversation. Yeah. And I, left. I, was, I was trapped in the corner. Yeah. And then he was like, hey, man, can, can we come in and eat with you guys? And I'm like, okay, I guess. Like, And it was like, you know, these guys look like little white guys. They were just very huge. They were, massive, yeah. they were tall, dude. They were like, like big. six, four, and up. We were yeah, fucking children like next like to football them. Players. I'm trying to get a table in the inside, and I'm looking back, wondering what the fuck is going on with these dudes. Um, then when they decide to sit with us. They told us they'd buy us our first round I'm like all right why not uh, fuck it so we have a big table with eight of us last the first round of drinks that's where we realized they're fucked yeah, up because it was like there's nothing bad they could do to us inside the mm -hmm. restaurant like so i don't see the scheme or the gimmick here these guys are obviously not from here either they said they were from new hampshire so we got in we start we order up some drinks we order some food and you know the leader tells us you know he propositions us to go out with them and you know shoot them because they're like having a bachelor party or whatever yeah i'm thinking that doesn't sound like a bad idea because now we have some subjects. You know, we just watch them get drunk, obliterated. Maybe they'll get a little crazier. It sounded good in my head. Like, you know, it sounded fine. They seem like all right guys. And then we, we go outside, me and Rex, to smoke a cigarette and talk about it. Discuss it and like, you know, a little caution. We're thinking like, all right, let's see where it goes. If anything weird happens, we split. We go back in and all of a sudden the jokes and everything stopped. The whole tone of the table changed. The food was there. So we started eating. Only us three started eating. They weren't eating. They were just sitting there. And then they were all texting. And it was pretty obvious they were all texting each other. Yeah, I looked over to the guy. The guy sitting left of me. I looked over to the left and I sneaked a peek at his phone. It's like a little group chat and it's got five bubbles in it. And I'm like, okay. They're w and they, he's also leaning over and whispering to the big, bald, neo-Nazi looking who, guy. Who I caught staring at me multiple <laughs> times. But like the stoic stare. And then, you know, one time he winked at me. But there was no smile. There was no like, what the fuck was that about, man? He, like, he, he uh, wanted to give you a cock meat sandwich. I, I don't know if that or it's like, you know, he want to kill me. And so things got really quiet at the table. 
they just become non-responsive. And the ringleader, the guy who pushed his way in with us, he was just staring off into nowhere with this stone cold face. Yeah. And so I've got every scenario in my head, like we're gonna walk out and they're gonna toss one of us into the van. Maybe me, cause the big guy seems to like have a fetish for me or something, I don't know. All the alarm bells are going off in my fucking head. And start talking to the guy next to me, I think his name was Andrew. We're just chit chatting back and forth and then comes out and says, you know, I don't see color, which, you know, if the alarm bells are going off yeah, before, this was a big fire alarm. And that's why I knew it was like, we should ditch these dudes. So we go outside. Close, out. Close the check. First, Rex and Willie go outside. And then I have the, yeah, so we just fucking did. Kind of, we walked at like a pretty brisk pace. Brisk, you guys fucking ran. You guys literally, literally ran. I, I didn't want to run into those dudes again. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I don't know, that guy was big, dude. The, the big, big one was, big. was huge. And after he winked at me like that, but with that stone cold stare, it was like, what are you going to do to me, bro? I just had like all the worst scenarios. Like, I'm thinking these are weirdos that, you know, come out every year, kidnap like an unsuspecting bunch of dudes and sacrifice them and dance in their blood or something like, <laughs> you know, like, but we got away. Yeah. Got away, and then we just continue on with a normal night right. of like shooting, being looking out for tall white dudes on Bourbon Street. Yeah, we did not run into them again. No, though. we did not run into them. I think the rest of the night was pretty good after that. Yeah. And Mardi Gras happened. A fucking mess. Now when they see us in the streets, all they wanna do is.